Hi everyone, I'm Glenn Zuckman. I'll be your instructor for Art 490 ePortfolios for Artists. I wanted to send you a quick message about five things. Welcome, Jerry Maguire, Doubt, Public Parts, and Slack. Uh, so, number one, welcome. Welcome to Art 490. I hope you have a great time here. Our goal, as I'll say in a second, is really uh, to help you create a compelling portfolio that helps you get whatever goals you have now and as you move out of the School of Art. Uh, exhibitions and galleries, hired by animation studios, graphic design work, whatever your many goals might be, let's create portfolios that help you do that. Number two, Jerry Maguire. If you ever saw the film Jerry Maguire, you might recall that there's a scene where Tom Cruise keeps saying over and over, help me help you. Um, and that's really the goal of this class. This class is help me help you. Um, this isn't a class where I need you to memorize the fine points of Baroque architecture. Nothing against Baroque architecture, but you know, they're, they're, there's nothing to memorize. There's no exams. It's not about anything like that. This class is about you creating a compelling portfolio that shows your work as well as possible. If you ever did see Jerry Maguire, you might recall that that scene goes on for a while. He keeps saying, help me help you. And that furthermore, that's really the work of the film for a long time. His client, Cuba Gooding Jr.'s character, uh, they have the same goals really, but there's baggage and issues and it takes time to get there. And so what I've learned is that even though, you know, if you're in this class, it's a safe bet that you really would like to have a strong, compelling portfolio. But, you know, there's, you're a busy person, there's stuff. You have other school of art classes, you might have classes in other departments. Um, you have life itself and all of your other interests and responsibilities. And so if I leave you to your own devices, you probably have a first draft of a website by the end of the semester, but you might only have a first draft. And honestly, that's not good enough. Um, you should have a first draft earlier than that. You should be showing it to the class, both face-to-face -face and in our online Slack communication. Um, getting feedback and making a second, third draft to have not just an okay, but a really compelling portfolio. So help me help you, um, but also I am gonna push you a bit uh, to just try to really see strong work from you. Um, don't let photography or doubt, which is my next point, get in the way. Let's put out what you've got right now. And I guess I'll go to point number three, doubt. So I, I guess I wanna talk a little bit about three different kinds of doubt. Doubt in here, doubt out here, and also a, a thing we'll do toward the end of the semester called doubt club. Um, I've known a lot of artists. I've known artists who have a lot of doubt. I've known artists who have total confidence. And I've known doubt-filled artists who have fantastic careers. I've known confident artists who have fantastic careers. Um, most likely being somewhere in the middle makes sense. Uh, but I have known artists who are really good, really talented, know they're really good, and have this sort of sense of total confidence. Um, artists like that can have excellent careers. They can make a lot of money. They can really do strong, powerful work. I kind of believe that that's in a, I don't want to say narrow, but in a finite anyway, domain, that they can be really strong. But that for artists who really think the most powerful, most over here or over here or somewhere else ideas, that that requires a bit of doubt, a bit of doubt about culture, life, the world, and yes, yourself. So doubt is nothing to be afraid of. Um, it's really, to me, doubt is a strength. However, doubt also can be problematic and it can also be limiting. There's, again, there's this idea of doubt out there that you, you know, we have easy access to a world of great studio artists exhibiting in galleries and museums, great animation artists making feature films, great artists of all kinds that can be kind of intimidating. You know, I'm, I don't mean to presume that your work isn't also great, but you know, you guys will be many different ages, but I'll just pick a number like 22. So you're a 22 year old, soon to graduate from the School of Art. You know, this probably is not the peak of your career. I hope your work is better at 32, better at 42. You have more time to develop uh, both your skills as an artist, but also your understanding of life, the human condition, many things. So, you know, your portfolio doesn't have to be the greatest portfolio in the world. It's probably not realistic that you would be that at this point. So don't let 
the doubt of seeing great work out there and thinking that you're not quite at that level yet hold you back. That's understandable. That's reasonable. We also have, I guess what I mean by doubt in here is people will kind of just say, well, I don't think I'm ready. Oh, I don't have the photography I need. And there are just kind of reasons not to get your portfolio together. I believe that you can make a por compelling portfolio here and now and that you can show your work. And again, if, you're in, if you have studio exhibition or studio work, gallery exhibition interest, that you can get that work into galleries. You know, it's not an easy thing to do, but that you can make that happen now. If you're looking for commercial things, if you want to work in an animation studio, if you want to have graphic design clients, if you want to do user interface work, that that can happen now. Maybe not starting today at the highest level, but starting you know, even, even if Pixar doesn't need you to lead their next film, there are people who need your talents and abilities right now. So don't let that hold you back. Also, things like photography sometimes hold people back. It's like, oh, well, I'm waiting for my cousin or whoever to come back from the East Coast so they can photograph my work. Um, if you're a photographer in the class, then you probably already have a nice camera. Probably everybody else doesn't have a camera, and I hope as you get a little bit of money in your career, you can go buy a nice mirrorless or DSLR camera. Those are really awesome. They will be better. But we're going to focus on working with what you do have, which is a phone. And, you know, great cameras are better, but phones are pretty good. And so rather than wait for somebody who can do awesome photography for you, I mean, if you have a friend who can do it right now, great. But we're going to go through ways that you can take pictures of your work and of yourself with your phone and get solid images that you can put on your website today. So let's not be held back, uh, is my point. So, you know, yes, there's doubt, doubt about great work out there, doubt about whether or not I'm ready. I believe you are ready, and there are people who are willing to exhibit your work, people who are willing to have you work for them today. And so don't be embarrassed. Make your portfolio better as time goes by, but don't hold back now. Do decent photography of the work you've got, and let's get it out there. Okay, so that's kind of doubt in here and out there. I mentioned this idea of doubt club. We will have one optional class later in the semester called doubt club. You don't have to come, and if you do come, you don't have to say anything. But what I have found is that in the world of art, in the many worlds of art, um, artists are expected to be confident, to, to presume that they are excellent and that they're on the right path and that they know how to solve your communication needs and that they know their own vision clearly. And we don't have a lot of room for artists who wander around with a lot of doubt. But the truth is, as human beings and as sensitive artists, of course we have doubt. So this one special class will just be a time when we can kind of share our doubts. You may think you're the only person who has this doubt. I promise you, you're not. Lots of other people have in the past and do today have that same doubt. So let's, we'll have a conversation about that. Okay. Two items left, Public Parts and Slack. Public Parts is our textbook. It's this really great book by Jeff Jarvis. Um, I kind of already knew this, but I learned it even more clearly last semester that many of you are makers. In many cases, you might make with a paintbrush or with sculpture materials or installation materials or metals or wood or ceramics. Um, in some cases, you might do you know, illustration, design, other work with a computer, but still it's a kind of a maker thing. This, this internet cyberspace sharing interactive network space is alien for a lot, at least a lot of the students in Art 490 last semester and very likely many of you. Um, yet I profoundly believe that these tools, your own website, Instagram, um, LinkedIn, YouTube, art sites like Portfolium, Behance, ArtStation, that all of these tools can really advance your career. They can get your work in front of a lot more eyeballs. They can bring people to you. They can connect you to other people to share ideas, resources, tools. So, you know, you may have privacy concerns. We'll talk about those. In the case of something like Instagram where, um, you know, it's possible to be harassed there, and, and, and on behalf of the internet, I apologize to women everywhere, but unfortunately, women are realistically more likely to get harassed. It sucks, but it's true. Um, but there are ways to deal with that. Uh, you can very easily make two Instagram accounts. You can have a personal Instagram that you could set to private if you like, and you could have a professional Instagram that is set to public, so anyone can see and share your work. Um, in the past, that used to be a little bit of a project to do, but today Instagram makes that super easy. You can have two or actually up to five accounts 
that you easily flip between, post this here, post that there. So it's really easy to do. Um, if you're posting professional work, I don't think you're gonna get harassed, but if you do, um, don't take it personally, never take it personally. Uh, the internet did not invent trolls, they existed a long time before the internet. It takes like not even 30 seconds to take a, a, you know, a trolling or harassing or insulting comment and you know, just click on it really quickly, block that user, delete that comment and move on. Share your work with the rest of the great world out there. Um, so, uh, because I know that there, there are concerns about privacy, both concerns about privacy, but also just like how useful is this cyberspace stuff. I think Jeff Jarvis makes really a very powerful case for the real value of publicness, of sharing work, of interacting with people. So it's got 13 chapters. We'll read one a week and we'll discuss them on Slack, which is my fifth and final point, Slack. Um, this is a one unit hybrid class. So uh, you're used to taking three unit studio classes that are 100% face to face. So you spend maybe six hours a week in a studio somewhere. So we only get about two and a quarter hours a week, but only 45 minutes of those two and a quarter hours are face to face. So it's ridiculous. We've got 45 minutes to just do a little bit of quick face to face. Our other hour and a half of class time is online. Um, we're not gonna use Beachboard at all. We're gonna do 100% of it on Slack. With this email, I'm sending you a link to join Slack. Please do that right away. Hop on, introduce yourself, talk about your goals, your work, your interests, your life, uh, and we'll interact with each other. Let's get that conversation rolling. For stuff like talking about public parks, we'll do that, our, the 13 chapters in the 13 weeks, we'll do that on Slack. Um, and there's also a place to talk about creative issues, technical issues, if you're working with WordPress or Wix or any other platform and you want to know how to do something, that's a great place to ask. If you've put a portfolio or a gallery together and you want some feedback on how your work looks, that's a great place to ask, interact. Uh, we can talk about additional related things, looking for opportunities, writing cover letters, et cetera, et cetera. So um, you can use Slack on your desktop or laptop. They've got a really nice mobile app for Android and iOS. You can get it on your phone or your tablet. So dive on Slack and interact and let's share your work with each other and ultimately with the world. Let me know whatever questions you have. Really excited to meet you all. Have a great semester and can't wait to see your awesome portfolios. Thanks a lot.